Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm 9 miles up, I'm a real life 737 pilot and today I thought I'd run you through what is an RX point, what is a visual approach, how do we fly it and when do we fly it. So basically to jump straight into it, to give you a little recap on where we are, we are right now headed in towards a point called Desam, which is over the sea here, uh, close to the runway 28 left into Aarhus in Denmark. This is the place where, at my operator, we fly once in a while, and this is the place where we can fly a visual approach. So, let's talk a little bit about what is a visual approach. Well, the definition of a visual approach is an approach where either part of it or all of it uh, of an instrument approach procedure is not completed and the approach is executed with visual reference to the terrain. The concept is that a visual approach is normally carried out because there is no approach procedure for that runway or a time saving can be achieved by carrying out a visual approach as opposed to a long protracted arrival and approach procedure. So basically to make our lives easy. Which weather conditions do we need? Well we need the runway to be inside and remain inside for the whole duration of the approach. If we lose the contact with the runway it's not like we can just revert back to flying an ILS. Then we carry out a missed approach, we reset up and fly the pr approach we have. At my operator, we are limited so that only visual approaches can be flown by experienced first officers and captains. Now, our limitations is that except, except where there is an existing FMC approach, so if we go down here into the departure and arrival, go into our arrival, if there are existing approaches for the runway, we should use one of these, but still fly it as a visual because that way we can have the missed approach track into the FMC so that if we lose sight of the runway we can uh, go around, we have everything in here, we fly the go around in LNF and further on we have help in, or, uh, in the forms of our localized and glide slope to fly this approach. If we set this up so that we have the ILS set up and we have everything in here, we have the missed approach as set we will just fly it like a visual, so no need to report when established. We don't need to go around if we are beyond the one dot. All of these kinds of things, we just fly it visual. We are only limited to uh, when we need to be stabilized. Now, <clears throat> if for example, we imagine we fly into an airport where there is no arrival or approach in the FMC, that's when we can uh, fly it generating the RX point. So if you zoom in here on our plan mode, and we do like this, I think we should fa be fairly close. If we go to the next page here of any airport, you'll see that we have runways. So this is only the runways. There's no approach, there's no arrival linked to this. If we, for example, select runway 28 left, which we want to fly into today, you'll see that we're prompted with two boxes here. Runway extended, and so that is the e uh, RX point, and the flight path angle. Now, at my operator, it says here, uh, the pilot should generate an RX point at four miles from the runway threshold with a three degree glide path. So let's do that. Four miles, three degrees. So, now that we have that, we can fly straight to the RX point at four miles, <coughs> and then we can intercept flying this in LNAV, VNAV, just like uh, I showed you in how to fly a non-precision approach. Now we can fly the visual approach with the automatics engaged using an RX point. Now let's execute this. Now there is a threat here and that is the altitude on the waypoint. At my operator to mitigate any errors they have a procedure where it says the corresponding altitude at this point should be made a hard altitude in the FMC. So the airplane has now automatically calculated that we need to be at 1405 feet. This should be in hard altitude uh, now it says 1410, so let's go 1400 there, just to be safe. So now we have it as a hard altitude, okay? <coughs> so now we comply with our procedures. Now the thing is, when do we want to decel, when do we want to do all this? Well, we can just easily attach these two together, and then we have a flight plan. If we now go in to exit hold, you'll see that the aircraft will now exit the hold. So now let's show you how to fly it. So we of course want to have the airplane set up for landing so we can see we have a difference of 100 kilograms. That's going to be 64.8. 
We can set flap 30 and flap 5. Auto brake 3. Now, at our airport today, we do actually have an existing approach procedure. So what we can do is set the runway courses of 277. And we can set the ILS frequency of 111.1, 111.1. So now we help ourselves a little bit. Have we flown into a runway where there is no none of these? Well, then we would still set the runway heading um, and so on and so forth. But today we do have a backup. So should this be correctly procedurized, then we should actually have set up the ILS and flown this so that we would have the missed approach. But just to show you how to fly with the RH point, we're going to do it this way today. Good. So, what is our minimums of this type of approach? Well, at my operator it says the landing gate for the visual approach shall be the landing altitude plus 500 feet. So let's go here and say, okay, the airport elevation is 82, so our landing altitude is 82, plus 500, so that's 582, okay? So let's set that. Five eighty-two. Now. That kind of like introduces an error here because, as you can imagine, now that we have a 582 set, well, then we have the issue of the minimums call out not coming because the EGWS has priority. So this is why in my uh, company it says here the EGPWS 500 call out will act as a minimums call out. All right. Alright guys, sorry for this weird cut, just to uh, get you into the loop here. My simulator crashed and I had to set up everything again. But basically we have set up the approach as um, as stated in the video. Minimums are 582 and uh, the minimums call of 500 feet is going to act as our minimums call. We are right now uh, coming down towards our profile here, trying to catch up with the VNAV1 inbound a point that I created here which I want to be my approaching descent point so at that point I want to be an LNAV VNAV path 2500 terrain is noted I want to be an LNAV VNAV path with speed intervene and I want to set my revised MDA <coughs> so that's pretty much it guys so as I uh, tried to mention before the simulator crashed the only threat is that when you only have the RX point as you can imagine guys, we do not have the missed approach. So we do not have the published missed approach. So we need, okay, approach B ref, so I forgot to set that up when I reloaded the sim. Difference 100 kilograms, 64.2. There we go. Flat 30, wind correction, and auto brake free. Happy days. So we do not have any missed approach in here, so we want to have a nice look here on what we need for it. And climb on track 276 to 2000 feet and a 6 miles of Tango Romeo. Turn right inbound the NDB and hold. So we're gonna go Tango Romeo 6 miles, so we need the Tango Romeo 111.1, one, which we have already identified. And at 6 miles we turn right, right inbound the holding here, 277 inbound with right turns holding 2000 feet. So now we've briefed the missed approach, we know exactly what to do. Good. So now, even though we have an RX point here, we want to fly this one exactly like any other approach. Good. Uh, any other non-precision approach. So approaching descent, I want to have this point here is my approaching descent. But two miles prior to that, the pilot monitoring will call it out. <coughs> there we go. Approaching descent, a revised MDA, which in today is going to be 600 feet is set. We now this path, and we have speed intervene. So at any point now, VNAV is going to start descending down towards our 1400 feet. Now we're turning left. Now this approach, we are allowed in our, my operator to fly completely manual. Disconnect, auto throttle, auto pilot system uh, and everything. And that is good fun and it is very great for our uh, manual handling skills of the aircraft and it is generally a nice practice. 
But we are recommended at my operator to maximize the use of the auto flight system, the autopilot and auto uh, throttle, because even though we created this approach ourselves uh, with an RX point, we can actually use the autopilot all the way down to the minimum U side. Let's say that we are cleared to land already, so we can start configuring here. At 4 miles we'll have the gear down, set flap 15. Now you can see VNAV is going to pitch for the path here. Very nice. We can go into our progress page 4 to manage, monitor our vertical deviation. And as we can see over here, I'm just going to see if I can get rid of the yoke, there we go. We can see that our path is held really nicely here. There we go. Nice. Next step is going to be our final approach fix call. So as you can see here, we actually pretty much bang on the glide slope. So just a little bit early here, gear down, flaps 15, landing checklist to flaps touch, which is continuous recall, check speed brake, I'm going light, landing gear is down, three green auto brake, three set, flap 30 please. Flaps 30, flaps, we have 30 and 30 green light. Landing lights on, checklist completed. Runway heading is 276, so we can set it. Now this is where the limitations of the uh, visual approach here comes into place. As you can see, we are not exactly on the localizer. So whenever we feel like it, now we have 1000 feet, so we set the missed approach altitude of 2000 feet. Whenever we feel like it, we can disconnect and fly it in manually. Now, I want to do it now because we're pretty fairly close to the runway here. Everything's inside. And we can start just maneuvering the aircraft nicely down. Plus 100. That is checked. I'm just looking for two red, two white on the puppies here. Minimums. Continuing. Trying to keep the runway in a fixed spot in the uh, in the wind sheet, uh, in the glass shield. Two red, two whites, but I feel like I'm coming a little high here. Uh, three red, so let's correct that. There we go. Red to white, keep the descent going 800 feet per minute, don't shy away from the runway. 50, 40, 30, 20, Raise the nose, 10. close the thrust levers, speed brakes up, reverse is normal, idle. Now we look for the ground speed 100 knots for the call outs, manual braking 80 knots. 60 knots. Stopping is a short, we can close the reverses. And that is how you fly a, a visual approach, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. Uh, and I'll try and get back to you. And if you have any video requests, make sure to reach out to me in the comments and I'll do my best to accommodate your wishes. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, guys. It keeps my motivation up really high. And uh, see you in the next video, guys. Bye!